I know you're in there. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Splatoon! Last time, we played around with sniping with better results than I expected to say the least! I made some pretty good shots if I do say so myself! I'm no expert, but I'm pretty happy with how it all went! This time, we find ourselves back in Octo Valley, overlooking the lofty misty cliffs and their many, many fantastical waterfalls. Oh, and fallen power lines, those two, yeah. We kinda gotta get the power back up and running. That's the whole objective of our mission. Heck, we're even kinda dressed for the occasion. Yes, get one of these fluorescent jackets, and you too can be a power plant worker. You even get a gun for your troubles. <laughs> anyway, uh, looks like I've stumbled on a level. Oh, um, I'm gonna save that level for another time, yeah. Uh, let's try and find another one if we can. Once you've uncovered a level, it stays uncovered, so it's no big whoop if you uncover one, and for whatever reason you want to go back to it later. You can exit a level from within a level if you want to do that, too. Uh, where can I... Hmm. Maybe... Actually, yeah, I think up here is a stage. Uh, perhaps, 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 perhaps... Yes! You are! Oh! I think this one could be fun. I'm very glad that we're doing that, and once again, I skipped Every time. Every time. Well, patiently reading or not, I already know what the stage is, and it's the Kelp Dome! Yeah! And our goal is the enemy base where it would be in versus mode. That's already cool, but it's about to get even better! We got company, bucko! Octolings ahead! These scallywags can turn into octopuses and swim in ink too! They're similarly matched to you! In the, they can turn into, instead of a squid, an octopus and swim in their ink. They throw splat bombs at you. They have a weapon called the Octo Shot, which is basically a wasabi splatter shot in that it has identical stats to the regular splatter shot, but it throws splat bombs instead of suction bombs or burst bombs. So I'm gonna call it that. Call it like I see it. I don't think they're capable of using any sort of ink strike though for a special, so don't worry about that. Uh, you actually, you know. Actually, I sounded like I was doing the toad voice right there. Didn't mean to. You have these. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. You have these fish eggs that show you the required path. They'll take you by the Octolings. They'll take you to the checkpoints. But there is optional stuff you can do if you divert from it, of course. Now, something that's super cool about this place Octo Valley predated the Kelp Dome being added as a stage to versus mode by about a month. And the Octo Shop predated the Wasabi Splatter Shop by about nine months. You just never know when something minor like that might be foreshadowing. I'm gonna grab that. Oh, uh, maybe I. Whoa, 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 could be good. I'm not sure if I totally need it. Maybe I will use it. I'm not totally decided on that yet. We'll try going without it for a little while, because I'm always a stickler to see if I can squeeze every little possible egg I can get out of a stage. Uh, burst Bomb's probably not going to do me too much good against this. The Burst Bomb doesn't save a whole lot of time when you're using a splatter shot. In fact, I think it is actually slower to throw a Burst Bomb and then start shooting. Um, so I won't do that. Um, you, um, yes, back here. That is where your sunken scroll is. That is one of those sunken scrolls that sticks with you because it's very jerkish in its location. It took me a few playthroughs of the stage to find on my first try. Uh, you. Oh boy, uh, this is kind of a bad situation. If you could turn into a squid, uh, not a squid. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to insult your your tentacleness. Please uh, turn into an octopus. I swear I won't call you a squid ever again. Uh, if you could, please. Um, I just really want. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll just show a picture of it on screen. It's way too much trouble. Yeah, that's what they look like up close. It's just in general really cool looking. Um, there is unused data in this game hinting that at one point Octolings were intended to be playable. We'll get into that later because I there is a lot that I can say about it that's kind of spoilery though. But cool stage. Got lots of eggs. Doing well. What's our scroll this time? I forgot this one existed! Oh my god! <laughs> the <laughs> How could I forget this one exists? Eve even has basically a fruit that was given to her by a squid, implying that squids are the root of all evil in the Octarian Holy Scriptures. <laughs> 
<laughs> that might have broken me. Wow. <laughs> that is our adventure in Octo Valley. Off we go to Inkopolis Plaza, which is totally in this puddle. Cause we're all done with those lowly level three weapons. We level four now. We in the big leagues. We slightly more funky fresh than we were five minutes ago. So now that we are level four, we are allowed the privilege to give people our money. Oh, hello. So welcome to Cooler Heads. Feel free to um look around if you want. All the gear here has, you know, uh, abilities and stuff. If you want to know more, you could press home and look at the manual. If you're interested in that sort of thing. Loser alert! <laughs> <laughs> so she is an anemone with a clownfish living in her hair. Her name's Annie, which is a pretty obvious pun there. But I remember, back when this game was new, I turned to somebody sitting next to me and I said, you know, I'm really surprised for the clownfish they didn't go with a Nemo pun. And then they spelled it out for me. Nemo. I am such adult sometimes. Also, Cooler Heads written in squid knees on the top of the screen totally has the mega evolution symbol in it. So here you can buy hats. Since this is our first time buying equipment, I want to go over equipment specific abilities. These have been pointed out into the bios up to this point. The abilities that you see now can only be obtained on headgear. Next up, we have shirts. Jelly Fresh, thinking your visit. Buy Jelanzo's clothes to become full of confidence. Abilities are being inside of the gear items. Information is living in manual. Press home for the reading, yes. Jelanzo is the greatest. I just want to hug him and squish him and all the other things that would probably be exceedingly painful because he's a jellyfish. Here are the abilities that are only on shirts. What's going on, Squiddo? Glad to see you in here in Shrimp Kicks. You looking pretty slick there. Somebody's been battling, am I right? Just so you know, all the stuff I'm selling comes with abilities attached. No extra charge. If you don't know about abilities, just press home and check out the manual, you heard? Contrary to what shoe companies will tell you in the real world, shoes sold at Shrimp Kicks really will make you run faster. However, they're still working on the jump higher thing, maybe in the sequel. Um, also, I love how the white seahorse shoes are totally RSS shoes, just saying. I gotta give props just for the character that is this guy right here. His name is Krusty Sean. <laughs> Already a great name as it is, but as if that's not good enough, he's also a tempura shrimp. And for all eight of his legs, he's wearing shoes on all of them. It's just, it's so great. I love this guy's design so much, his name, everything about him. Of course, though, Jalonzo is still my favorite. Why would you think any different? <laughs> I know he's like that weird foreign guy that like works in every shop in your town, and that's totally what they were going for with him, though. But just the design of the jellyfish. I know jellyfish sting you, but I can pretend that squids are immune to that, so I can just hug him and cuddle him and have him just be all squishy all over me. This is getting really creepy. All right. <laughs> uh oh. Um. Bad, bad, bad. Do not scroll over to Ammo Knights when it's been a while since you last checked your weapons. Uh, luckily, I can make you shut up by doing this. And we're back with the fluffy yet crunchy man himself. Just a few other things I want to say about shopping. I already bought those purple sea slugs. Um, I like run speed up though, but if I don't get rolls on it that I want, I can't just go here and buy another one and hope to get better rolls on it. You can't have duplicates of the same piece of equipment. There are, shall we say, some shady channels you can go through to get different subslots in your equipment after it's been rolled once, but we're going to be going over that later. Just know that you can't do that. Shop inventories also refresh every 24 hours of real time. If you're wondering what exactly the significance it has that an ability can only be on a shirt, only be on a hat, only be on a pair of shoes, it means that they are not only non-stackable, but there are certain abilities that cannot be run with other ones. For instance, you are not Krusty Sean. You can't wear four pairs of shoes at the same time. So until you become the man himself, you are not going to be running, say, Stealth Jump and Ink Resist Up, two very good abilities on the same character build. So that's something you need to keep in mind. I think that about covers everything we can do in the shops, at least for right now. As time goes on and we level up, some better equipment will become available, but these one-star pieces of equipment that only have one slot on them by default is all that we can buy. So for now, how about we get to the weapon of the day? 
So, no charging, no rolling, no any of that crap. We're back to a good old fashioned gun with a .52 gal. This is a heavier shooter than what we've seen so far. By that, I mean it weighs down the run speed a little bit more, but packs a serious punch. In fact, it even outranges the splatter shot by a little bit. This is one of my favorite shooter weapons. It splats in only two hits, assuming that the enemy has no defense modifiers, of course. Make your shots count, because it can only fire so often, but if the two bullets manage to land in perfect succession, the damage is so good that the .52 gal is tied for having the fastest time to splat of any weapon. Make sure that you fire at just the right moment, cause as obvious as a tip as that sounds, it's very easy in Splatoon to feel like you should always be holding down the fire button to cover the ground. If you're always holding down the fire button with something longer range like this, you're gonna be telegraphing your movements from around corners, letting people know where you are really easily. It's easy to forget if you're used to playing shorter range, more rapid fire weapons. And on top of that, since it has a lower movement speed and a lower fire rate, it does also have the weakness of not covering all that much turf compared to other shooter weapons that are shorter range. This results in fewer specials earned, but the weapon is mostly meant to fight from optimal range and get those two bullets for a quick kill. All around, it's a solid shooter. Its sub-weapon is the Splash Wall, and I've been waiting to talk about this because finally we have a traditional weapon that uses the Splash Wall in the way that you would expect. This is why I like the set of the standard .52 gal so much. Because of its low rate of fire and each shot needing to count, this sub can buy precious time and allow for more aggressive play. It lets you advance on more long range weapons and hit them with your quick two hit kill. It allows you to trap enemies, allows you to block a narrow hallway and then just be ready to fire on whichever way they're gonna go if you see them moving away. It's just all around really good and complements it so well. Also helps to make quick getaways as always. I love the combination. And it gets even better when it's special is Killer Whale. It might seem a little bit redundant that we have three different parts of the same set that are all good at playing narrow hallways, but it's darn good at doing that. A splash wall buys time to lay down a killer whale in situations not otherwise possible, plus the combination of splash wall and killer whale is downright formidable in ranked battles. In tower control, you can do a well-placed splash wall on the tower's path to force enemies off it. You can launch a killer whale at whatever goal the enemy is trying to achieve in any ranked battle. It's just all around a really good set. And now that we have all three parts, one of the things that makes this set so popular is that the .52 gal is a great counter to other shooters, especially the vanilla splatter shots that are very balanced and have few weaknesses. The main reasons being is that it outranges all those common shooters and there's not really a whole lot they can do about you killing them so fast over a great distance. You have the splash wall that affords you mistakes where it doesn't allow them mistakes. The killer whale lets you manipulate where they're moving in addition to the splash wall already allowing you to manipulate where they can move. It's just all around a really good set for countering the Tenetech splatter shot among other ones. In the way of equipment, I'm going to, once again, give special mention to Damage Up. The .52 gal, true to its name, does exactly 52 damage. Because of that, you want damage up on your set to counter any defense up, because just about any defense up will turn your two hit kill into a three hit kill. In fact, most any equipment that isn't special duration up will help this set in a meaningful way. Again, it's very good in a lot of situations. It's seldom that it's not helped by at least something adjusted to your own playstyle. A bit of a fun fact is that in the beta version of Splatoon, this weapon was called the 5.2 gallon, and instead of the killer whale, it had an ink strike as its special. Yeah. There are some weapons in this game that have the same combo, such as Jet Squelcher and Range Blaster, but yeah, it was originally a different playstyle. Next up is the more fabulous glittery cousin of the .52 gal, the .52 gal Deco. It is the exact same gun, though special depletion is light. It's been watching its figure. Its sub-weapon is the Seeker. Our first time seeing these, and actually one of our last times seeing these. This is a rare sub-weapon that hardly any kits have, so if you see a Seeker on a set, it might be worth running just so you can have that sub-weapon if you like it that much. Seekers will travel forward after you launch them, and they will leave a trail of ink behind them. They work in one of two ways, either traveling in a straight line in front of the user if there are no enemies nearby, or the Seeker will careen toward a target, hence the name Seeker. Holding the R button allows the user to see which enemy it'll lock onto before you deploy it, though only kid forms can be targeted. Like with any bomb, a direct hit will be a one hit kill. But indirect hits, oddly enough, do anywhere from 20 to 80 damage. 
Why does it have such a big damage range? I have no idea. In terms of combat uses, they are great if used on enemies from behind when they don't have a clear escape route and won't see it coming right away. If you like to trap people with bombs, like I do, they're excellent at overwhelming the enemy because they give them something else to worry about on top of you shooting at them. Seekers are also excellent at helping the entire team. It wouldn't seem like it at first, but if you lay down one of these at the start of a match and just have everyone swim behind it, you'll get to the battlefield so quickly before the enemy team, and if you can cover that center of the battlefield fast enough, you might be able to pin down the other team just from that alone. Though that's not to say it doesn't come with a few drawbacks. Its ability to follow an enemy and home in on them is limited in that it can only turn so quickly, and it will not follow an enemy ducking into their own ink. They gotta be in kid form. It's also possible for enemies to jump over it, though this is a little hard to do in latency during online play. As for what the Seeker means for the .52 gal, it helps with increased mobility through the path left by it, and it also allows for more chances to reload when swimming behind it. In addition, very helpful tip with the Seeker is that it splashes ink behind it as it moves. So if squids swim close to it, it effectively cloaks the splashes made from swimming at full speed, further helping the mobility. Swimming behind it and lining up for a shot can get some very certain kills, especially when firing when the opponent is mainly focused on dodging the bomb and doesn't realize you're right there following it. It's also useful in fakeouts, making them think you threw a bomb and then ran when really you're swimming behind it. The special on the deco is, well, Ink Strike. Remember that beta .52 gal that never saw the light of day that I talked about like a minute and 20 seconds ago? Well, they chopped it in half and here's the other half. As always, when a match is about to end, charge up the Ink Strike and launch it at all costs. It'll do far more to help in turf wars in those last seconds than just killing a couple members of the enemy team with it. It can be used to advance through areas they have locked down, it can be used to pressure a sniper so you can get past enemy lines. It's the Ink Strike, we've been over this before. On to the equipment, the big new recommendation here that was not on the original is Special Charge Up. Remember that the Ink Strike is a bit more expensive than the Killer Whale. And the .52 gal, as you know, isn't very good at covering the ground and getting lots of points for its special super quickly. This can help that ink strike go off more often. Overall, .52 gals will be showing up a lot in your games. They're seen a lot in high level play too, and I'd say that the standard set is good at just about every mode, while the deco is probably best suited for Turf Wars and Rainmaker. Oh map rotation gods, what is in store for me today? I'm actually pretty optimistic. I don't remember any particular map annoying me with the .52 gal. It was a weapon I made for a long time, and I felt it was pretty good on just about anything. Salt spray rig. Okay, bit of a repeat from last time, but I'm not really bothered by it. I love riding the elevators here. So much fun! Sure, if by fun you mean absolutely terrifying! Our oh, running around an empty mall is surprisingly fun. It's good exercise, if nothing else. Ah, running is for... Octarians! I swim, damn it! Swim! <laughs> I don't have an issue with this map rotation. Salt Spray Rig is fine enough as it is. R1 a mall I might have a bit of a bone to pick with, but let's go into the lobby and pick our equipment. This is the build that I'm going with. I do like the .52 Gal Deco, don't get me wrong. Seekers are super fun and we will get time with them later, but... I just like the standard one so much. It's the one that I made for a long time. It's the one that I would want to show off the most. Um, I went with one main of damage up, thought that would be good, a little bit of run speed up, doesn't help on the .52 gal too much because it is a bit slower, but I figured it couldn't hurt and it had pretty good synergy, giving me three sub swim speed ups combined with my shoes, um, course ink resist up is wonderful. This ink saver sub doesn't do anything for me in particular, it's just kind of there because it's there. I wanted a lot of ink recovery up because of how ink hungry this set is. Yeah, I do have ink recovery leg after throwing down the splash wall, but the bullets themselves are still pretty ink hungry, so I think I'm gonna go with that. Special charge up to make fun of the make fun of- Yes, I am making fun of its slow rate at building up its special, no. I guess in a backhanded kind of way I am though, but I wanted to compensate for the fact that I wouldn't be getting my special too often so I can get that killer whale all the much more. Here's what I'm looking like. Perhaps one of these days I will be truly fresh going into one of these battles and not look completely and utterly hideous. Our day begins with Salt Spray Rig once again. Let's get going 
once again. I think I'm going to go to the perches that are overlooking the center just because I got pretty good range and I think there's some good shots that I could make from there. Could also throw a splash wall from up high to help my enemy, or help my enemies. Uh, well, with a shot that bad, I definitely am helping my enemies. Holy crap. Here's my chance to make up for it. Busted down their wall. He's got, oh, nope, didn't matter in the end. Thought for sure he was going to do it. Blast me there. Uh, that wasn't his splash wall, though. Still alive and done. I'm doing pretty darn well here. Wow. Uh, let's get that built up, get our special going, and uh, I don't have a, I don't have any reason to believe anyone's there. Uh, let's, uh, oh, I know where I can use this. Let's go over this way, or nobody's coming up. Uh, uh, let's hurry up and use it before it wears off. Might be the closest I've ever come to actually wasting a killer whale. <laughs> It gives you a lot of time to aim it, though, so it's very unlikely that you could ever waste it, though. But I almost found a way right there. Uh, let's uh, take a note from that really fun uh, heavy splatling that we saw last time that was doing this to fill in a lot of ink. Not all that efficient once again, though. Just kind of fun to do. <laughs> Want to fill in the center right here. Salt spray rig is a little bit strange in how the map control works. This main area up here is very, very important. It's a big square that can be difficult for the enemy to get to if you have control over it. But there's an almost as big square down at the bottom of the map down there. And I've had times where even though I had control over the main thing, the hallways as well as that section just added up to enough that it was actually in my favor to not pay attention to it. I've lost matches because I didn't pay enough attention to that little one down there. Uh, you know, that guy could use some help. He is an ink brush, kind of short range. I'm a shooter. I could go with him. Uh, why are you just kind of stick? Okay. Uh, wait, two! <laughs> Just rolling in kills this time around, and I'm not even playing a roller. Oh, oh boy. Um, no, 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 no. I thought I had invincibility. Crap. Uh, went from almost wasting a killer whale to totally wasting a killer whale. <laughs> wow. I, I guess my mind was still in the mode of you. Your special is invincibility, so use it as a panic button. <laughs> that is a very poor time to use a killer whale. Um. Oh, hey. I saw you. I saw that. I saw that. Box you in. Yes. Got you. Took you down. Uh, I need to actually throw it on a splash wall again. That, I think I actually squished him with it. Wow. I know, he was on the other side, so no. It, it was in my favor to do that. It blocked his shots, and I was able to shoot him enough times. Getting those two bullet quick kills quite, uh, quick, quick kills quite a lot. Uh, you're going down there. Can my range actually get to you? No, it can't. Uh, you can go down. There you go. It's a little nervous on jumping there because it's a bit inaccurate in the air, though. But we're still doing pretty well. Got another killer whale. Man, three times. Uh, there's probably somebody in there. Well, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> we got this easily. That was a very, very one-sided game. Here we go. How'd we do? Our stats are eight kills, two deaths. Um, nobody disconnected on the other team. The rapid blaster wasn't doing a whole lot, and he didn't cover all that much turf, though. But, yeah, we took it. Decided to switch rooms for the next game. Let's see if we can shake things up a little bit, get some new people in here, and uh, what are we looking like? Uh, 2.52 gals and an ink brush is what I saw there. Uh, some squelchers, some end zaps. I think we're gonna do pretty well here. I think they had a wasabi splatter shot in the back. All weapons that I don't mind fighting with a .52 gal at all. So R1 them all. Got a few bones to pick with this one. It is a very open map. You have these, you have a big open center to it. You have these different hallways that you can use to get to the center, which are kind of nice. But the issue that I have with it is just that it's a very, very sniper favoring map. And oh my gosh, how am I not? There we go, man. I thought it said Mewtwo for a second, but Ma too. It's like Mewtwo and Zatu had a fusion or something like that. It'll happen eventually. Let's do that. I'm trying to hope and do a get the um, get off the splash wall a bit more often. That's kind of one thing I didn't like about the last game was just not playing the splash wall much when really the synergy between the .52 gal and the splash wall is why I like this set just so, so much. Uh, get you, uh, ooh, uh, you, hey buddy, hey. Don't know Japanese, you, Oh, those letters don't really look like any English characters. I would try to phonetically pronounce them as if they were English characters, but it doesn't really seem to be working out that way whenever I try. Uh, you, you guys can, oh boy, uh, you guys can live is what you can do. Uh, I'll let you live for right now, but I'll lay down a splash wall and then you will be dead. Yes, gotcha. Uh, again, manipulate you off to the side, already shooting where you were gonna be. Yes, gotcha again. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just, I like the .52 gal a lot. I think the set has a lot of good synergy. I just think it's very fun to play. Some people might call it cheap, and yeah, there are definitely people out there that play it just because it counters the ten attack so well, but it's good. It really is. I like it a lot. I like the whole thing of if you can get off the tech on it, it just, or tech. Yes, getting off two bullets in a row is clearly a tech. No. If you can get off those two bullets in a row, then you will definitely be able to kill an enemy very quickly. Hey, you. Optimal range. And, okay, had to happen sometime. We are, it seems pretty even right now. I'd say maybe we have a slight lead. They have some ink in our base. We have some ink in theirs. Let's let's get rid of that. Uh, let's deal with you, actually. Uh, you're retreating. Yeah, you're going up there. Uh, you are just running away from me. You do not want to fight me head on, I can see. Get you. Gotcha. Get you, gotcha, good. And uh, let's uh, let's cover the ground in some squid guts. We got ourselves the killer whale. Let's uh, do it through the center of the map. This will go through the middle, and it will affect the ground on the other side as the map is symmetrical, so this could be giving help to my teammates. I was kind of hoping I'd get a kill without meaning to. Oh, boy. Uh, another killer whale. You get a kill when I didn't doing the exact same move that I did. I'm going to be kind of upset. Uh, you're going to go that away. Yes. That's another thing about splash balls is that you can manipulate people with them where you know that they're logically not mo going to move toward it, though, so you just move where they're going to, shoot ahead of time. Just in general, really fun, something that I like to do. I'm a big fan of playing mind games. I like throwing bombs, like throwing splash balls, like doing all those things. Ah, oh, I thought I'd get in one more kill for good measure when the timer was almost done. Oh, well, that was still a good game, though. 50? 35? Not bad. Eight kills, two deaths. I think that's the same one twice. Wow. Collect my points, and I think that's pretty darn good. So how about we go cash in our chips with Judd, see what he can tell us. I gotta be honest, I like the .52 gal so much that I think I might keep playing this for a little bit even after we're done here. Yeah, because my vibe is smoking. I played three games in a row on Salisbury Rig before I got R1 them all. I won all four games by quite a bit of big margin. Meow. It's true that hiding in your own ink makes you hard to see, but if you swim around, your foes may notice ink ripples you make. So keep an eye out for ripples in enemy ink. And spray away if you catch your foes in the act. What he's saying is partially true. If you're swimming above 70% of your maximum swim speed, you will make ripples in it, but you can just tilt the control stick a little bit less to not do that. There is also the ability Ninja Squid that makes you not make ripples at all, but it caps your swim speed at a lower amount, though. But yeah, that is the .52 gal in its entirety, and what a wonderful weapon it is. I just love the dang thing so much. We battled some Octolings. I'd say that's a pretty big highlight. And we also... Went shopping. Okay, yeah, two at two out of three ain't bad. Next time on Splatoon, we are going to be looking at a bit of an old favorite for those of you who were born in the 80s. See you guys then.